Hello ladies and gentlemen, Christopher here. Here's an update of my garden. Should be good. Alright guys, so we'll start with the heirloom tomatoes. I picked about four large Walmart bags. They're in the house. Put some apples because they were green. And uh, they were a lot lush, but I trimmed them back. We did have about 35, 30, 30 something like that degrees. So we had a little frost damage to some plants, but that was about a week and a half ago or so. So everything's warmed up a little bit. We'll be in the 80s and 70s and 60s at night. So uh, new growth coming from the bottom. There's flower buds on them. If you don't <clears throat> self-pollinate with a, like a toothbrush or something, usually two out of the four or so will set fruit. And this variety here, is uh they get large fruit tomatoes so yeah so i installed another i don't know how when i installed these bamboos that it would hold this but i had to install another one that's very strong it's connected staked to the fence there all right guys this is my compost bin <coughs> excuse me compost pile and yeah, we had a lot to talk about all right, anyways, so this is a pile. I move it from here to there to here to there when I flip it or move it around to there to there. So the bugs, the worms, earthworms and stuff, they feed on it. Um, I do have it covered. This is a tarp that the neighbor had. And I uh, got it. So uh, when, when I first set this up, I had lots of material. A couple thread uh, 55 gallon black bags and four trash cans full of compost and just material so I put it all in one pile so we shall see it dries out fast kind of it's kind of cool but yeah so that's the compost pile hello everyone this is a I have five five gallon buckets in the garden and the red wiggler worms are in here I bought about uh, about 1500 to 2000 with including babies in the in the compost uh, amount it's about a thousand strong big ones or so there's five of these around the garden uh, yeah so these are good lids so I before I got the red red wiggler worms they were local so they're good to get them local they did become frost and they did survive that means that they were in a good home. So I fed them once for one week. I put some celery and apple and carrots and put in a blender and uh, seaweed they like, nori seaweed. So I put some of that in there. So that was a week, a week and a half or two, two weeks. I fed them again. Yeah. <clears throat> so I went to Sam's, Sam's Club. I bought I bought a bulk uh, paper bags. These are the small ones. So I bought about a 500 pack or so. I still had some bags from a different buy, not from Sam's. But if I run out, I'll have 500 to go. Okay. So about a week and a half before I got the worms, I set these up. So I put some mulch here around, and there's this. <clears throat> this, all the five gallon buckets are cut out on the bottom. I didn't use a sawzall, I just use a sharp, rigged knife. One of these for lemongrass. Alright, guys. So these are red wiggler worms, compost worms. And just to warn you guys, they are very active and happy. Okay, I'm gonna. Alright, guys. They're very happy. Okay, let's see them. Let's see, 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 see. Ooh, they're eating, guys. They are eating. Okay, they are eating. Good guys. Good, 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 good. So this is one of the active ones. So there are babies around. This video is gonna be long. I can feel it. Might have to make segments. But yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So there's five of them around here. So I don't know what the contents. I did fill them up with compost and uh, peat moss, and I put tomato cuttings in there. And just uh, some elephant ears and stuff. That's when I first started it. So I have a, I don't know if it's like 10 inches or something like that, a thermometer for worms actually. 
So I might stick it in there and see if it's hot or anything. All right. So I want I wanted to get the the 20 20 some odd inch one for like something like this, but we shall see. So I'll stick them in there and see. It's a very active. It was very cold. They survived. So that's a good indication of that good environment ecosystem. All right. Ready? Okay. This is the passion fruit. It was all the way up there, and I had to get ladders, tang vines that grow vigorously. So I picked all the papaya. Those are just the ones I left on there. So uh, you can cut it, I think, and cap it so water doesn't get in there. And uh, they're hollow stems or trunks or whatever. But I picked all the papaya, filled up a couple. Well, I got one box full in the, yeah. Then I gave some to the neighbors, yeah. They, took, they just shed, so I just picked all that up. Cherry cherry bush or so, tree bush, probably a bush, is uh, in full gear. It's got blooms on it, blossoms. I haven't sprouted the blossoms yet, so that'll get some pollination. All right. So the mulberry produced black mulberries. I didn't pick any. I might have ate some every now and again. I don't know if I'm just going to cut them back so I can get to them. If I can get a ladder and get up there, not a problem, but... I don't know, maybe for the birds or something. So no fruit on the passion fruit, 18 months or so, so coming up short. They are cold hardy. We'll take a look at what I did recently. All right guys, for the African basil, these are the cuttings. That's it, that I cut in water. There's one over there and there's one over there. That were, yeah, okay. So I've been putting mulch down, okay? Okay, okay, okay. All right, guys, you ready? Mosquito in there, probably. Okay, so every bin, every uh, worm, tower, farm, what have you. One, two, three, four, one over there, five. Eggplant got a little damaged, but it is alive. Might need a prune or something. Tabasco pepper plants, I can pick some, dehydrate them, give them away, or you just let the birds eat them. That one grew from wild seed. So I've been trimming my lemongrass. We'll come to those in a second. I just did that. <clears throat> so uh, that, a couple of them I cut too short from the stalk. But they'll come back up. As I learned that and did the neighbors one, you cut higher up, they come up greener faster. So lemongrass, there are nine about no there's about eight i basically killed one but so lemongrass so this is a nice one i just did this one but it was nice and lush i should get a full green green back so i don't know if this uh tabasco is gonna make it we'll see i have a carpenter ant problem inside not that bad but if i had bug stuff you know who knows All right, so this is the healthy Tabasco. This is my biggest, the biggest. All right, so as the mulch I was saying. So basically, coming over here, I set up the tomatoes. Soil rich from pots. So that was our compost, manure. So all around here, all around the garden, there were pots everywhere. And I dumped the pots, released the earthworms six inches or so. And put it around the plants, good fungi, bacteria, and stuff. What have you? Is that... Come down. There you go. Is it... Okay, so one, two, three. Three lemongrass to do. Cut back, get some mulch out of it. Another Tabasco. So I planted three Tabasco pepper plants. Uh, three, it'll be three, the garden will be three years old in spring, so right around the corner. All right, so lemon ball likes love. <laughs> likes love. This is very woody and dying back or so. So I put some, like I said, from the pots. So all this, if you see mulch, basically what I've been doing, and not much so planting, but fermenting and making the soil really rich. So I have seeds, I have a couple, I don't say a couple pounds, but I have a pound California wildflower seed and just a whole bunch of 
bee pollen wildflower seed and a fleet uh, a seed seed packet kit thing like 42 seeds or something it's the same kit i bought in the beginning of time all right so since i keep coming through here all right so these actually did well i think because the season sand this is gonna be sand chris come on okay so basically i had five gallon buckets they're supposed to be no. Oh, sorry, guys. They're supposed to be, uh, what are they called, Chris? So when you buy buckets for your garden, buy food grade tip. So I bought buckets a long time ago. They're falling apart. See the little pieces down there? Blue. All right. So these are actually garden pots. They'll last a long time. I bought them a while ago. So these are all my mints. So there might you might see grain here, but there are some a lot buried. So those are, I want to say 15 gallons maybe, I think, I'm not sure. And these are 25 or 20 gallons, probably 25. I'm not sure. But they're very heavy, very heavy. So I have two collards left. This is my nice one. I think I better, well, I staked it. So I was over there in the house looking out. Big storm came. Not even a big storm, but this one broke. <laughs> Yeah, so I came out here right before the rain came and I rigged this up. But there's a couple stakes on stakes, stakes, stakes on stakes on stakes. We'll take a look at the uh, the uh, worms in a second. So this is asparagus. Uh, this is asparagus. There. Okay. So you want to keep the crown in line. So as the seasons go by, we're in zone. Uh, I think in ten. 10 AB, I'm not sure what the B, AB stands for, but zone 10 in uh, Florida. So that's asparagus. So I don't know how good or bad the pollen is terrible, guys. It's just terrible. Uh, so someone gave this to me. This is a, uh, what are they called? Avocado, one there, one there. That one has a little disease-ish, but it has new growth. This one definitely has new growth. You can see pollen on it, guys. Lemongrass, sharp as ever, because it's fresh. All right, wildflower, or whatever it is. I don't think it's a wildflower. So I pruned it back. I don't think that was good. Sorry, guys. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. So in all my oregano, this is all I got. This is pretty healthy. But I didn't want to transplant it without uh, mulch and different soils. and I mean, potting soil. and Not potting soil, but manure and stuff. I gotta get a load of that stuff. So there's all my, there's some weeds in there. I picked the bolt, but, so those are carpet or spicy oregano, and then Italian oregano over there, or Greek oregano, one of them. So like I said, you might not see, when I planted this, this whole thing was full of mint. And a pepper that grew from seed. Okay, Chris. I cut that one too short at the, it'll come back. It will. It's not hotter. Hotter temperatures. Tabasco that they needs to be staked. I mean, it is staked, but it needs to be like that one staked. And uh, habanero that I trim back. Habanero. That's right. Actually, got a lot this year. But all this got fermented, and I mulch on top. <clears throat> okay. So these are my mints that I had on the fence. Plastic uh, milk cartons that just died in the sun for the summer. But they're in there. There's more foliage. I need a, I don't know if I'm debating on watering or not. Sage tree. So I got that uh, same cherry plant over there, same species. But it was right under the, the uh, passion fruit. So I'll, I'll see it when I can do it if I remember where the water goes. Water over there, comes this way, that way, and down that way. Well, it's good the worms are alive. Yeah. So, yeah. Ooh. I'm just waiting for a snake, guys. I haven't seen one in a while. I'm just saying. Uh, bananas, these are the stunted ones. Probably because of papaya, big papaya. Eggplant that grew from mild seed. So... 
from here all the way around was pots. And I dumped the pots out, put some manure, stuff like that. This video is going to take forever to export. Just saying, Chris. I'm going to try to stay away from Facebook. Just saying. Nothing against it or anything. But we shall see. We shall see. So, if you... Well, they got frost damage, but... You have bananas, you just chop the top, and I think they'll just be fine. Ow. Ow. I got a blister. What have you. Okay. So this needs a... I have bamboo. I actually took all my bamboo that I wasn't using and put it in the garage, so... When raining season comes, it doesn't rot it or you know, carp rants, what have you. All right, so I just flipped these. They are dry. I just put some banana leaves on top to keep the bugs out. But they are dry, okay? So I might leave them open when it's just get some rain. I'll water them and put the lids back on. All right, so that's to, from here down. I just went around the house outside and trimmed some, you call them domesticated plants, what have you, you know, and filled that up. So that's what's in there. These are compost, grass cuttings, kitchen scraps, uh, cardboard. So I got an idea. I'm going to take all, a lot of my cardboard, put it in a trash can that has no holes, and soak it. And then apply it to different... Elements. I'm pretty sure all these sprouts are tomato, cherry, cherry grapevine from last year. So I dumped them all right there. Alright, enough rambling. Let's go over here. Alright guys, this is one of my favorite spots right here. <laughs> favorite spots. Okay, so there's that species tomato, the heirloom. And then these ones are, uh, I'm not sure what these ones are. What type they are. But no said of that. This is my favorite spot to look. So all this bamboo I had on hand. Speaking of bamboo, where is it? Okay, so all the bamboo in the, house, in the garden. Besides the little bamboo I bought from the store, comes from back there. <clears throat> Sorry guys, I bleached in the house, I need to, it's in my throat and stuff, yeah. All right, so if you pick the bamboo at a young age, and it doesn't have enough to harden in the life, I don't mess with it, but it'll be weak. But if it has, it turns a different color and harder, it'll be solid last year's. All right, guys, got some dill down there. It grew from wild seed. What I should have done is just let the dill, they were big a year ago, and I just took them all out, all of them. So it'd be a good idea to just let them bolt and produce again. I don't know what I'm hearing, if it's garbage man or what. I know it's garbage room. Wild, or not wild blueberries. Bush uh, dwarf blueberries need to be, they'll be taken up. And put back over there where they were in the beginning of time. This is where the water comes. Put that there. You can see all the pollen, guys. Look at that. Oh my goodness. What a mess. What is that, Chris? All right, so elephant ear. It was a gift from a friend. The stem. <laughs> the leaf. It came out. It was completely frosted. Not death-wise, but this came up. Yep. This is a fire plant. Fire bush. Something like that. But, uh, okay, I'm going to go look at this. All right, guys, I just took a walk to the neighbor's house, but they're just uh, cleaning up the roads on the borders with the machine. Yeah. Anyways, back at the garden. All right, so coming through here, all through here a little bit, there's some bee balm. I think it's called bee balm. I'm pretty sure. The reason why I know it's bee balm, because the fragrant is very strong probably good for pests and stuff speaking of pests she's always got aphids and caterpillars so maybe make her a little garlic and onion spray what have you but we'll see chris all right so bee balm it's a couple down through here so these are all new growths from the tomatoes so i need to stake these they all have fruit, or maybe fruit set, or just uh, flowers. Whenever this tomatoes grew up, I always watered the foliage. Didn't really get too many fungal issues, but uh, they liked that it seemed because they're so big. But all this was buckets. 
And then I dumped the buckets out and planted tomatoes. I wanted to do leafy greens, but there's my pitchfork there. All right, guys, should be it. All right, take some far shots. So you're beginning a hummingbird? Hummingbird, that's a bird feeder thing. Collard greens, two left, that's a healthy one. I want to make some juice, should be good. Get some lemongrass to clean and freeze to hydrate. I don't like to dehydrate though, but let me freeze it and give it to the neighbors. Mulch is down, soil's fermented in some spots. There used to be tons of pots for five gallon buckets, even garden pots everywhere. I use those big ones and uh, trying to save up space. 42 seeds, varieties, and uh, different herbs. And uh... All right, ladies and gentlemen, just finishing up with the garden video. I think it's going to be a long one. All right, so here's my compost pile, not bin, pile. Now, if I had the 20-incher, I could see how hot it is in deep inside in the core of the pile. But uh, it didn't get hot. It was about 45, 55 degrees in that range. It was, you can see the steam, I mean, you see the steam on your breath. All right, so I see a bunch of seeds coming up. That's okay. It's just... So I'm going to flip it and go from there. All right, guys, keep you updated. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so what I've noticed, whenever I flip the pile, it leaves a it leaves a organic matter behind. A little bit of carpenter ants, a little bit. A lot of earthworms, insects, what have you. I, I, I think there's uh, 55 gallon black bag of lemongrass plus more from another trash can so now will be the point is to rinse it I mean hose it so I gotta hose those bins over there I gotta hose these bins over here I might water the garden ouch I'm gonna poopy patrol to pick up around the yard coming in close here let's see so I put some shells some clam shells so it is a little warm it's musky doesn't stink remember i haven't <clears throat> last thing i put on this pie was uh lawn lawn, uh, lawn grass clippings just to heat it up a little bit but yeah when i put water with it, it does have a warm feeling to it yeah all right guys